first uh, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sofia Lecky, and I'm from Ruby uh, World. Currently, I'm working in Ruby as a Ruby developer, and uh, probably you think why I'm here. So, currently in Ruby, there is everything about Ruby on Rails and not much anything else. And uh, in Python, there is a lot of things. Uh, you have Django, uh, it's similar to Ruby on Rails, and all a lot of another stuff. So I decide to do, I want to switch uh, from Ruby uh, to Python. And uh, when I've started to, to find uh, information about Python and uh, thought what is what I really like from Ruby and wanted to find it in Python is that Ruby community is a lot about uh, object-oriented programming. We have a lot of great uh, people who talk about this on, on our conferences. So currently it's hype for, for functional one. I'm not don't know how it is in Python, but I generally like object-oriented design and, and design patterns is one of my things. So uh, when I started to looking for the information, if I can use all things I've learned from Ruby community in uh, Python, First, uh, I found what design patterns you should use in Python. But I will start from what design pattern is. Uh, it's a concept from architectural world, but uh, uh, design pattern uh, in software world is a model uh, to a common design problem. Uh, describe uh, the problem and uh, describe the general solving it. But let's go back to what uh, patterns uh, you shouldn't use in Python. I found interesting uh, uh, presentation on YouTube. Uh, on the end of my presentation, you will see the URLs. I can send them uh, to you uh, to see the presentation. Uh, it for me, it was interesting, uh, but yeah, I'm from the Ruby. Maybe it's not such interesting for Python world, but uh, the part of it I agreed, the part of it I didn't agree. Uh, but uh, uh, later about that. First, what uh, what was interesting uh, for me and what I agreed was what patterns. Uh, Two patterns for, uh, that you should use in Python. One, uh, first of all, it, it was singleton, and the definition is ensure a class only has one instance and provide a global point of access to it. So it's, it's simple stuff, and you can implement it in Python. Uh, this is some dummy example of a singleton. But uh, like I said, I, I read, I was uh, watching some presentations, and general idea is was that we shouldn't use this kind of stuff in Python. But what should we use? Yes, just the model. The general idea here is that you can like switch from this and just use a model and Python is taking care to have only one instance of it everywhere and you don't need some fancy implementation of this design pattern uh, because it's like in the language. Another one, this kind of design patterns, it's iterator. Uh, same as in Ruby and Python, iterators are pulled into the languages, so you don't need to care of uh, implementing this. So iterators provide a way to access the elements of an aggregate object sequentially without exposing its underlying representation. It's, it's definition of this. 
And uh, I didn't try to find some some examples of iterators as, like I said, is built into the language and and uh, I don't think it's it makes sense to create some uh, some examples for that. But uh, generally, for me, interesting part of it is uh, was uh, using generators. So this is some example of generator. It's how you can build some fancy iterator in uh, in Python. It's just like some example. You uh, the part of iterator you can be interested to when you're writing Python. Uh, so. Um, this is, uh, there was more things in that presentation. I choose that two ones because it was most interesting to me. There are some parts I didn't agree, as like dependency injection, the author suggests to not to use them. I think it's good to use them, so maybe I, when I will have more experience in Python, I would understand why he don't want to use dependency injections. But for now, uh, I, I didn't use that examples, as I said, I don't agree with them. Uh, yes, and uh, that design patterns uh, are there, are in Python, but built into the language, so I don't think it's like you can don't know them. It's good to know them. It's good to use them to uh, understand uh, what is under the hood and uh, to be able to talk with other developers uh, from other languages and uh, understand each other. Uh, and it's one of parts of design patterns that uh, is, is um, really interesting to just learn them for good uh, uh, communication uh, between uh, uh, developers from other other languages. Uh, and. Uh, uh, what uh, design patterns um, you would uh, need in Python, you would need to implement in Python. This is like another part of my presentation. I found few interesting for me example of design patterns in, implemented in Python and uh, design patterns I uh, I was using a lot in, in Ruby and think that the, uh, they are connecting uh, uh, our words in um, uh, this topic. So I choose adapter and uh, again definition, convert the interface of a class into another interface client expects. Adapter lets classes work together that couldn't otherwise because of incompatible interfaces. And the, the example of code, such uh, simple Think that you just uh, have class with one interface and create the other uh, to uh, just to call uh, delegate the methods uh, to to another class to have a proper interface for uh, for this. Okay, I skipped the one thing and. Uh, uh, here, examples of adapters uh, are popular in uh, in uh, frameworks so like Ruby on Rails and in Python world uh, uh, like Django. Uh, for example, for uh, using different databases uh, within the framework, uh, you can find always adapters there to uh, implement same interface for for different databases. Uh, okay, another uh, interesting uh, uh, interesting design patterns I found I was using a lot and and uh, 
uh, I think it's common for our languages and, and uh, general, for general use, the popular design pattern uh, is facade and uh, short definition is that provide a unified interface to a set of interfaces in a subsystem. Facade defines a higher level interface that makes the subsystem easier to use. So another simple uh, example of the facade. Uh, this is like uh, the facade is uh, design pattern I, w I was using a lot in my in my work as a Ruby developer, and uh, I think it's the um, example that. Uh, uh, in Python where we will be too. So when you're integrating with, for example, API, when you're fetching data, uh, there are a lot of classes for fetching, for uh, uh, for uh, building the structures, for saving uh, this data, and it's all you can all calling for this class uh, uh, calls in the facades and just call the facade uh, in the rest of the code and uh, in that way the nicely structured code can be easily used in different parts of, uh, uh, of uh, application. So, oh, I'm pretty fast with this. Okay, uh, another example of design pattern is proxy. Uh, proxy is uh, uh, one is uh, one of design patterns that is uh, very popular and it's uh, on in multiple frameworks too. Definition is to provide a surrogate or placeholder for another object to control access to it. And uh, uh, some simple examples on the left side is something like, I think, more, more real life, or the right side is something that's more easy to read, but um, less real life example. Mm. And generally, uh, proxies uh, most of the time are used to uh, scope uh, mm, to uh, scope the usage, for example, from some users, uh, not to be available for something, etc. Like in, in the right side example that uh, you have limited access because of the age of the driver of a car, uh, but there are multiple things that can be limited, uh, for example, for bank accounts or something like that. Uh, and uh, you can easily use proxy for that. Here is another example of proxy. This is example of uh, from Django framework. As you can see, yes, it's it's really there. I had example of of adapters too from there, but uh, it was it was a lot of code that would not fit to the uh, to the presentation. But here you can see a short proxy. Uh, taken from source code of, of Django framework. Yeah. And uh, from the Django world and race world, uh, interesting design pattern uh, for me is MVC. This is another design pattern and general idea that, and it's like implemented totally differently because in Django is MVT, I don't have enough experience in Django to uh, uh, to talk about that, and uh, I'm waiting uh, to to explore this problem as I'm used to uh, typical MVC model view controller that it's on Rails uh, implemented there. Uh, 
Yeah, so it was pretty short. I was pretty fast, I have to say. Uh, so generally, uh, I've used uh, a lot of sources and uh, there is much more design patterns, uh, but I wanted to focus on that few that was interesting for me. But it was just scratching the surface, uh, so I recommend all of you to, to take a deeper look for design patterns. Uh, there is that basic book, uh, the Gang of Four book, uh, Design Patterns Elements of Reusable Object Oriented Software. Uh, it's an interesting book from totally different worlds uh, because it's C++ and small talk uh, more like, but general ideas uh, is there and the, the book is interesting, I think. The second uh, thing I would like to recommend you to see is Mastering Python Design Patterns. It's on YouTube and, uh, like I said, uh, there was interesting new information for me. There was some information like that in dependency injection that I could not agree, and maybe it's because I don't have enough experience. Maybe, maybe there is something on it. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a book. You don't need that design pattern. It's a YouTube presentation. I'm sorry. And there is that guy, Alex Martelly from Google, and I saw that there is a lot of information from him about Python and design patterns. Um, there is uh, much more uh, sources on the internet, there is much more books like Refactoring by Martin Fowler, that it's really uh, one of the most interesting books on the topic. Yeah, uh, so that's generally it from my side. Thank you very much and yeah. Do you have any question? Uh, I have a question. Can I ask? Yes, of course. Uh, for me personally, uh, patterns, facade, uh, proxy, and interface look uh, really similar. Can you um, give some, I don't know, distinct explanation? Of how how do they differ between each other? Yes, of course. So uh, there are all structure patterns, so they are of course similar. But uh, uh, the difference is uh, that, for example, proxy it's limiting access. Uh, uh, adapter it's changing interface. So you can have same amount of, of the methods there, but uh, they are like changing interface of, of the class. Yeah, and facade is limiting uh, uh, options. So it's uh, one class that can link other classes and uh, make it easier to use. So you don't have to call multiple classes, you just calling one and this this is limiting uh, your options too, but but in a different way than than other patterns. So the separation is uh, purely formal and in real life you can kind of have um, all three uh, combined in one scene like limiting access uh, because of uh, security reasons and limiting um, methods or whatever for a user and simplifying it. Am I, am I right? Mm. I'm not sure if I understand well, but like I said, they are pretty similar, but they, because they are structural patterns, but uh, the general idea what when where you should use it is different, so you yeah, can switch one to another because the the proper use is for different uh, problems. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, Sophia, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, can you please the show the single tool pattern implemented in the Python? I have a few questions. I think that there is something wrong. It's kind of will, will be good. We we will discuss it. Okay. Uh, can you please show this part with single tool? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I will one moment. I will find it. It's probably wrong because it was like general dummy implementation to show uh, something and not uh, uh, like a proper implementation. So. Uh, oh, okay, sure. Just uh, we are just uh, guys here. We uh, like noticed that it's kind of we think it's wrong because you can create multiple instances. It's so it's really cool that you understand it. Thanks. Okay, and we can yes, see yes, this. Yes, yes, you can create multiple instances of this object, and it's it's not real silicon tone in this case, I think. Okay, thanks. Okay, I will add one more remark to, to this. So, yeah, please, guys, thank you, Daniel, about mention this. Uh, so, uh, when we'll see here, the main idea of singleton is to use just one instance for any cases of creation it. Uh, so, it will be, it, um, it has its own role even in any language, even in Python. Uh, so, you can use it, but its implementation should be another one. So, singleton should uh, have uh, this instance, just one instance. So, for example, after singleton, you write like uh, instance equals none in in it you check if this instance already exists or not if exist create new if not return the same one so each time you will use the same one so it won't be uh, recreated or something like this so this is the one remark i'd like to add Yes, exactly, Alex. Thanks. I think it's also good to mention that you can easily implement it using using um, any class method or um, using the magic method uh, with new, it will be even it will be good, really good implementation. So there is some multiple way to implement singleton in uh, Python. Uh, thanks, Sophie. And uh, I want to add that um, Python model can't uh, properly replace a singleton pattern because we can't use something like database connection in model and live object. We can use only single tone for this. Okay. 